Poor old Martin just wants to be a nurse. Little does he realise that the job application is more like a Mensa test. It's each to their own as far as I'm concerned. I just want to make something more of my life. Well, you certainly seem to know your own mind. Yes, I do. So, what's the odd one out? Where? Number two. Predict. Speculate. Auger. Reminisce. Prognosticate. <laughs> Have you read these? Yes, questions? I've read some of them. And you reckon you'll walk it, dear? Moment number two. Good old fashioned moaning Percy Sugden has a very organised and efficient mail system, which means that he can dispatch even Valentine's Day cards with ruthless efficiency. Before you say anything, I thought you might like to know I have a strict policy where unsolicited mail is concerned, it goes straight in the bin. Well, I have a strict policy, you know. What? I'm not drinking with a rude old man and I shan't be sending him any more Valentine cards. Good. Moment number three. Good old Des Barnes is usually a hit with the women, but sometimes he thinks he's such a hit that he gets hit on quite literally. It's feisty little Angie versus Des. Round one. Well, you know what it's like, a bloke with good looks, charms, why the vive. Bears just keep chucking themselves at my feet. Oh. So, uh, this pint's yours, is That's it? That's correct, darling. Oh, oh, hey. What the was that for? Well, what do you expect from some bimbo who's ain't heady enough to chuck herself at your feet? Uh-oh, Alec Gilroy incoming. Now look here, young lady, I'm not having a member of my staff. I'm not a member of your staff, not any longer. I'm off, it'll save you the embarrassment of firing me. Moment number four, pub landlord Alec Gilroy has his own early version of Babe Station. What does he look for in a barmaid? Someone who knows how to do all the measures? Someone who's a dab hand at the till? No, you gotta look good, baby. In comes viewers' favourite Raquel, who Alec reckons is as good as pulling punters as she is pints. Now look, if I have to spend another day behind the same bar as Marshmallow Brains out there, I'll go into a decline. Look, there's half a dozen punters out there that are only there because she's there, and there's dozens more drinking twice as much as they usually do because they want a chance to chat her up. She's moved Oldsworth onto spirits tonight. Spirits! He only come in for half. <laughs> Moment number five, Angie has a bit of a different thesis as to why she reckons that Raquel is behind the bar. Round two. What the hell is she doing there? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? She pinched my fella, now she's pinched my job. What do you want next, darling? Shoes off me flaming feet? Well, they're all yours! I knew I was right to sack that girl. She's a raving nutcase. Oh. Moment number six, the now former barmaid Angie doesn't just want to walk into another job. Look, uh, about getting you another job. That's my problem. Yeah, but I'd like to help if I could. Well, anyway, I've had a word with Reg and, well, there's nothing going here. Good. Good? You're very sweet, Kelly, but I'd rather be on the streets than work for Reg Halsworth, all right? All right. Moment number seven, Alec might have stopped shoe-chucking Angie from returning to the Rover's Return. Rover's Returning. Get it? But he's always got eternally reliable Betty Turpin, who just loves everything about the job. She's been there so long, she's a part of the fixtures and fittings now, which means she must clean them as well. Betty will do the tables, won't you, Betty, love? Yeah, of course you will. And the empties, and the washing up, and the floors in the toilets. Moment number eight, and Jack Duckworth was so desperate to have alternative employment to the Rovers, that he even started moonlighting as a pallbearer in 1992. But unfortunately for him, his boss was pretty quick with an employment appraisal. What are you doing now? It's because boss to give him his home jib. God. First it's your shoulder, now your guts are bad. The client's in better shape than you and he's been dead a week. Jack probably wishes he was as well when Alec managed to find out what he'd been up to in moment number nine. Oh, I can explain, boss. Don't bother. As soon as you got the use of your legs back, get down to that Rovers and collect your cards. And in moment number ten, Jack finds there's something even more dangerous than his boss Alec in his life. His own son, the infamous Terry Duckworth. I don't want Lisa to find out about Andrea or the baby. All Mark Baldwin's car, all in there. Yeah, all right, Mum. All when he broke into Alf Robert's shop. 
So I'll do a deal with you, Dad. Right, my son, I'm listening. You don't mention any of those things. And I won't put you in hospital. And there is something even more dangerous coming up for Jack in 1992 than his own son. Moment number 11. Pop landlord Alec Gilroy gets even more business entrepreneurial ideas that he thinks is even smarter than hiring Raquel. He gives a warm welcome to the latest Rovers Return staff member in 1992, a tarantula. Never mind what I've got. What's all this about? No. What are they gawping at? You've got a spider. It's in a vivarium. I don't care if it's in a three-piece suit and spats. It's not stopping here. But it's harmless. I turn my back for five minutes. Look. Look, it's an object of fascination. Oh, God, my am... God. Tell me. Is it just the spider? And be straight with me. Just the spider? Well, I suppose that's something. There's no snakes. Anywhere even near this pub? No, no, no. It's just the spider. But it's fascinating. Come and have a look at it. No, thank you. You've not seen it. Is it a big hairy one? Why? Well, then I've no interest. Uh, oh, come it's on. It's waving its horrible bits. <laughs> Bet Needens have worried. The tarantula didn't want to stop there anyway. So Alec and Jack have to have a little poke around to see where his alternative accommodation might be. It's not there. Poke about underneath. Eh? If you see it coming out, nod your head and I'll hit it. Oh yes, very, very droll. The old ones are always the best sunshine. Is it there? Now can you see it? No, I can't. Oh, it's you. We haven't found it then. Oh yes, love, ages ago. This is just an old marriage ritual. Moment number 13. Jack Duckworth reckons he's a little bit better at hide-and-seek than his boss, Alec. So he has a poke around the pub as well. What's up with Jack? He's walking about like a constipated duck. Then out, he's having one of his back turns. Don't encourage him. Pop, pop, coming up. Ah! Hey, oh, what's going on? What you trying to do? Ruin me? I said just act normal. We don't want anyone to know about it. Uh, sorry. I said don't be conspicuous. <laughs> what the hell is this? May as well advertise it in neon lights the way you're carrying on. And you, find it. Because if it bites one of the punters, I'll be closed down. Percy Suggs and he might hate Valentine's cards, but has more than a good word to say about his old favourite pub, the Rovers of the Turn. In a better run establishment, you'd have a job to find. You want to go down there and see for yourself, instead of hiding away in this place. Well, yes. I think we might just do that. Meanwhile, back in our favourite pub, they counted to a thousand, and the game of hide-and-seek was finally over. Moment number 15. The very same place where, unfortunately, they've just had to deal with the death of a much-loved staff member. R.I.P. Poor Tarantula. Oh, my God, what's that? Well, it was either a Mexican mouse-eating spider, or it's 500 quid down the sink. Take your pick. Fascinating. Moment number 16. Following on from Percy's thorough recommendation of the Rovers' return, a charming chap from local council comes down to give it a rat review. He's from the environmental health, if you must know. Crack tiles, you see here, cracked. Clean crack tiles, though. Oh, yeah, but, uh, but they're clean, that's what matters. I mean, scrubbed every day, them tiles. And the ceiling? The ceiling? Oh, well, well no, I grant you, we don't, we don't scrub the ceiling every day. Emulsion paint. Hmm. Not the ceiling. All surfaces are required to be washable. I'm looking at a washing machine here, am I? Aye, 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 that's a washing machine. That's clean enough. Not in your kitchen. I've got a washing machine in my kitchen. So have I, but I'm not preparing food for the public. It's hmm. just a washing machine. Which means dirty clothes. Means contamination. Means it can't stay in the kitchen. And the coat's behind the door, you see? Once again. That's my coat and it's perfectly clean. <laughs> How do you come to work, love? On a bus? Usually, yeah. People could have spat on you without you knowing. Oh, come on now, let's keep this in proportion. I mean, it's just a few hot pots of the barm cake we're doing. It's not what you call catering per se. Mr Gilroy, we are talking about the Food Safety Act 1990. It was debated by 600 odd MPs. They didn't invite me to debate it with them and I'm not going to debate it with you. You are a caterer. This kitchen won't do. Start to finish, top to bottom, won't do. Moment number 17. Oh, Alec, let's just say that he remains philosophical about the situation. And he always has time for his favourite customer, Percy Sugden, who was only trying to set the council straight. You went down to that town hall and talked about this pub and hot pot on Monday. That's a thanks I guess, is it? 
That's the thing. Yes, well, you needn't bother coming back, cause you're barred. I never want to see you in here again. Don't worry. Never. Don't you worry. Never as long as you see that name over that door. <laughs> Moment number 18. Percy needn't have worried. Alec only has to make some slight modifications to his business. I didn't get it all. Mm. What have we got to do? Oh, we'll demolish the kitchen, build another one, that's all. I've got to have a nail brush with my name on. <laughs> uh, well, we might just manage the nail brush, Betty. At least we don't have to throw the rest of the hot pot away, then. <laughs> what are you talking about? You've a pub full of people out there that have just heard Felf Inspector condemn it. I couldn't give hot pot away to next door's cat. The best moments from classic Coronation Street 1992. Compiled by Michael Farry. Copyright Granada Television and ITV PLC in the clips used.